Good morning, church. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, we all are part of the fitness. We have many of us uh, that, 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 that was not even actually exercising or Jimmy before coming here today. So you have done it now. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it's a, it's a very important issue and things for a human being. When you wake up in the morning, you exercising yourself, you do some gymming and many others. And I know 70%, if not 90%, have not done that today. But the one you have been doing for the past three hours here is as good as Jimmy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, viewers all over the world, thank you, thank you. You have been part, if not all, the blessing here. Why I don't want to talk about my friend time. Time has been my best friend. Why money are many people friends here? If you ask to choose between money and time, which one will you choose, my friend? My brother, if you are asked to choose between money and times, which one will you choose? Time. Hunger will kill you. <laughs> but I know my friend does not want to bet your money. I know my friend does not want to bet your money. Now we better choose money. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Last week we talked about uh, the hidden truth. And uh, the copy of this message has been passed across. You have the copy here. The hidden truth. You need this message. You need this message for your friends. You need message this message for your for your for your neighbors. So please get this message. Wonderful. The hidden truth. So you have it in French, Spanish, and all other languages. So thank you. Hallelujah. So today we have to follow the trend. And uh, last two weeks we talked about uh, God is spirit and his worshippers do so in spirit and truth. And uh, the last week was uh, the hidden truth. And uh, today I was just looking, it's one of the reasons why I, I kept too late. And uh, and the Lord gave me a message about relationship. We need to talk about this because there are so many broken homes. Talk of partner, your business partners. You can't have how many business partners you you have for the past five years now. And uh, talk of friends, relations, relation. There are so broken. I mean, relationship. So therefore, let's talk about that and see what the Lord would lead us to today. And let's, I'll take you to the book of uh, First Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13. Are you there? Okay. Okay. If I speak in the tongues of men or angels that do not have love, I'm only resounding gong. Raised to resounding gong. You know what it means? If I have the gift of prophecy, you can see vision. You can see what is to come, what will happen in future. 
if you have the gift of prophecy and can see mysteries, it is beyond human. And all knowledge, if I have faith that can move mountain, it, I mean, a faith that can move mountain, I mean, think about that. But do not have love, I'm nothing. Absolutely. Nothing. Faith that can move mountain, think about that. Cannot even stand love. That you have faith that can move mountain, and you have no love, you are nothing. This is what the Bible says, First Corinthians 13. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to ashes that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Mm. Absolutely, love is the greatest. Love is the greatest. You take your time to read from from beginning to the end, with all this, with, I don't need to go further. Love is the greatest of all. Mm. Take your time to read. If you go to verse 4 there, you say, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. Oh my God. So it means those who are envious, they lack love. Mm, my God, I like that. I mean, <laughs> who, who, who have love among us then? Who? I don't know. Who, tell me, with this quality, who is there that, mm, with all this quality, I did again verse 4, love is patient. Are you really patient? Remember your rich watch? From time to time, you have to look at my, your time. You know, each time you look at your time, you are telling me, Tim Joshua, you have to do. Be quick, be quick. I have meeting, I have family meeting, I have business meeting, I need to go to work tomorrow, I need to live here, I need to do this, I don't know what, how many, how long it will take me to get out of this Ikotuegbe. We are being in that Ikotuegbe for many years now. Even before now, here was called poultry farm. Now you are sitting inside the poultry farm. Are you there? So he said, love is patient. We are patient. That is why we are here, where we are today. If we are not patient from church one, we will have abandoned the church. The first church was destroyed by, by rain. The second church was destroyed by storm. The third one was destroyed by Omolile. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because I'm part of Omolile, I'm Omolile too. Omolile. I mean, who is not Omolile here? All of us are Omolile. Huh? You don't have land. If you don't have land in Lagos, you have it in the village. Say I'm Omolile. <laughs> I like that. That is the touch church was destroyed. But with patience, we believe. We'll be somewhere. Now, the Bible is saying love is patient. Love is kind. We understand kind. Anybody can pretend to be kind. But to be patient, you can't pretend it. It's very difficult to be patient. If I'm talking, now we are in a, in a generation without law and without patience. Everything you are using is as a result of impatience. You want to eat, you have gas cooker, poop, 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 poop. you warm it, you, you see people on the street, tomorrow is Monday. Yes, you see people on the street eating bones, eating yam, eating everything. Why you are putting a, you, you receive phone calls? Hey, 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 are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Okay, wait for me, wait for me, wait for me. Mm -hmm. As a result of impatience, there are traffic everywhere. Traffic everywhere. Impatient. So, yes, it's an impatient here. Yes, it's a 
It does not envy, that is love, does not envy. What could make one envy? When you are not content. So some people now as we are sitting down, they are looking around to see the, some style of air. Oh my God, some attire, beautiful attire. If they cannot meet the person, they will look at the, some, as we are talking about, they are the car garage, car, car park, looking for, oh, this car is beautiful. I must get it. I must get it. Hallelujah. Yes, you say, it does not boast. Uh, boast. That is love. Ah, uh, yes. You see, when I say relationship, relationship exists where there is love. Relationship exists where there is what? We are not talking of the kind of relationship today. We have a little trouble, you quit. You can't stand the consequences unless when the goings are good. You, you are there, I'm your friends. Not, can, not that kind of relationship. Not can, that kind of relationship. Relationship exists where there is love. And love cannot exist without relationship. Uh, where, whom will you love? When you are not have anything with your neighbor or whatever. There is love cannot exist without relationship. So here we are today. From east, from south, from west, different country gather together here. Even though some of us pretend to be here today, maybe you are looking for your business partner, that is why you are here. Some are looking for, hey, how are you? Fine. Oh, I'll be looking for, mm, they, they say that church do deliver people. I will be here today sitting down. When any first lady they deliver, I'm going to marry the lady. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, different. Listen. You know the reason why you are here? All over the world. We gather together. This is why we, the, the Lord said, Christianity is a relationship. Tell your neighbor. I can hear, I can understand. Christianity is a relationship. You come from there, you come from there. Even the funny thing, sometimes you sit with your, your gardener. After here, a gardener that cannot even look at your face. But it's just side by side with you. Tell your neighbor, Christianity is a relationship. So one who opened the gate for you, a gardener, a, I mean, it means nothing to you. You, you and your errand boy. But you people are sitting on the same side, the same seat, the same. Mm. Even sometimes when you look around, you see the managing director, the head of the, the company, it's an usher, clean the church, why a gardener also usher, clean the church, all together. Where can this happen? Christianity is a relationship. I can't hear you. I can't, I can't hear you. This is why we don't have a special seat for anyone here. Everybody, when you look at what you sit, is what everybody here sit. When you first come, you sit in front. First come, first serve. Because Christianity is a relationship. It's not a religion. Where we prepare a seat, when you are not there, even your children can take over the seat. It's 
not a religion. Love cannot exist without relationship. And relationship exists where there is war, where there is love. Can you see where I sit? Look at the person sitting beside you, or behind you, or at your front. You will find that it may be someone out there who cannot look at you. Maybe someone who clean your shoe. But because Christianity is a relationship, yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Say, are you still there? As a, as Christian, we should realize that all about relationship originates from God. All about relationship originates from where? From God. Relationship begins with God. And overflows to people. Relationship begins with who? And overflows to who? To you, to people. As a Christian, our relationship with friends, our relationship with relations, our relationship, our relationship with others must remain an integral part of God's originate relationship, original relationship. I mean, an integral part of God's original relationship. If your relationship is not from there, then we can talk of might and power. is your relationship with others. Other can be friends, can be relation, can be family, can be membership, church memberships, your pastor, your dear, your dad, others must remain an integral part of God's original relationship. In the face of adversity, long suffering, affliction, just name them. Because relationship originally original from God, come from God. You have no power to quit. Unless God releases you. That ah, because of consequences. This man duped me. This man, I mean, insult me. This man embarrassed me. Because of that, you quit. Without God releases you, you quit because of trouble. That is not God's relationship. The Bible says we must stay put and get used to the situation in order to obtain spiritual maturity. We must what? We must stay put and get used to the situation. Whatever happened between you and your friends. Stay put, get used to the situation. 
in order to obtain spiritual growth and maturity after all spiritual growth is a portion of obedient to God spiritual growth is a function of human relationship with God are you are you with me there just as Physical growth is a function of time and intellectual growth. It's a function of learning. So we must stay put, getting used to the situation. So you you are you are good in quit. You cannot quit from relationship unless God releases you. You have been quit from relationship right from the beginning of your life. Little relationship you have related with friend. Once trouble come, you disconnect yourself. You quit. No matter the trouble, no matter what happened, you quit. But the same friend may be your Messiah tomorrow. Or Messiah of your children. That you are wrong today does not mean you cannot be a Messiah tomorrow. That you are not perfect today does not mean you cannot be perfect tomorrow. You keep running from this, running from that. Many of us today, when you enter many offices, you find that the edge of the company is someone who has injured you in the past and you need help. By the time you nod it or you say the first, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way we live a relationship is the same way we will enter into the new relationship. Jesus said in the book of John 20, 23, if you forgive the sin of anyone, they are forgiven they are forgiven them. If you forgive the sin of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sin of one, they are retained. If you leave a relationship embittered and resentfulness, resentful, hatred, fight, you, you leave the relationship, you will enter the next relationship with the same attitude. You will enter this, the next relationship with the same attitude. The unforgiveness you hold 
for your former relationship will hinder your future. It is impossible to establish a healthy relationship with a person who had left a relationship embittered hatred, envy, jealousy he left the relationship because of I mean hatred it is, it is, it is impossible to establish a healthy relationship with such people even though he or she may say may claim to have forgiven it was not forgotten. It was not forgotten. You may claim to have forgiven him or forgiven your boss, forgiven your, 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 your former friends. It was not forgotten. Love forgets wrong, so that there is there, 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 there is hope for future. Love forgets wrong, so that there is hope for future. As a Christian, take note of this way of exhortation. If you are in the place where God wants you, you know, take note of that. If you are in the be in a business where God wants you, if you are in the church where God wants you, if you are in a relationship where God wants you the devil will want to dislodge you the devil will want to displace you out of the relationship are you with me if you once again listen if you are in the place where God wants you to be. The devil will do everything to dislodge you. I mean, to displace you out of the relationship with people there. And anything close to Jesus receives devil attack. take it back again if you are in the place if you are in the place where God wants you either marriage and God wants that is where the marriage from God or business or church or just name it if you are in the place where God wants you to be the devil will do everything to dislodge you I mean to replace you out of relationship it's a sign when they will know that you are in a place where God wants you this is your destiny in your hand it will fight you with all he has to dislodge you, to displace you out of relationship with people there. By 
thinking that you are out of point, out of, out, out, out of, you are out of touch, I mean, you, by thinking I'm out of touch, you are giving devil a chance. I'm out of touch. When you are later touch, your anger, you begin to misjudge yourself. Ah, I'm a Christian now. Why should all this happen to me? Anything can happen. Devil want to uproot men and women from the place where God planned them. Where God plans you. Devil want to uproot you. It's not you know we, we normally go to a different place where God does not where God does not plant you. But when you finally get to where God plants you, where God wants you to be, devil will do everything. But for you to stand devil, you must not think that you are out of touch. When it comes, you know it is sign. That something I'm in, in the place where God wants me. When attack comes in your marriage, an attack come in your marriage. Remember this message. Yes, this must be marriage. God wants me. That attack is to displace you out of relationship. To dislodge you out of the relationship, but it happened to many today. There are marriage and remarry, marry and remarry. How many married and remarry marriage that have been divorced today? When you divorce in a house, you will likely divorce the second time, and you likely at seventy percent of divorce home today. At keep divorcing and divorcing and divorcing. I pray you 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 see that the attack you are going through is an object that separates impurity. Tell your neighbor, the attack I'm going through, the situation I'm in, is an object separate impurity. An object that separates impurity. That is the situation as a Christian, the situation you are in now, see it as an object that separates impurity, see it as a refiner of character, see it as a war. I can hear you. See it as a refiner of character, see it as a builder of character. Again, the question, are you a believer? If yes, whatever situation you are going through right now is an object that separates impurity. It's a refiner of character. It's a builder of character.
So what situation are you going through? Are you sick? That you are a Christian does not mean you cannot seek. A Christian may be sick in body and yet a friend of God. Are you poor? That you are a Christian does not mean you cannot face hardship. A Christian may be poor and yet a candidate of heaven. Ask God to give you grace of courage. I ask God to strengthen you so that you can praise God and not complain. I ask God to strengthen you so that you can press on when it seems all is over. Take, take your pen and, and write this message down, this, uh, this, this prayer, so that it will help you. That is your situation as a Christian is an object that separates impurities is a refiner of character is a builder of character so you just your belief is because uh, you are a christian now you are out of touch. your relationship with your neighbor, with your friend, still remain an integral part of God's original relationship. I told you, relationship begins with God and overflows to you. Any relationship that begins with God comes from God, does not quit unless God releases it, releases you. You are released to leave that relationship. You are released to leave that marriage. Leave the marriage, you hear from God. Not because of situation in the marriage. We don't leave marriage because of situation in the marriage. We leave marriage because God said leave. We don't leave business because of trouble. We have, leave, we have to leave the business because God wants us to leave. But look at your life today. Everything, everything you have left behind. It, your friend, you have many business you have, you have, you have done in the past. You let many business, best business partner, business partner because they dupe you, because trouble come, because they, you left the place. No, we don't leave relationship. In the face of adversity, we don't leave unless God releases all. This is why today you can't get any good relationship again. Because you left this one because of hatred. And the, the new relationship you are going to have, that hatred will continue to follow you. Healing must take place. That is why today 
When you see a woman that left home because of fight, disagreement, misunderstanding, the, the one he will marry tomorrow, that trouble, that others will continue to follow. The same thing he left behind will follow him. The way we leave a relationship is the way we, we enter into the new relationship. So I want to leave you here, we continue, because this is a message that will continue. Because it's nearly 99% here find themselves guilty of this offense. Yes, your former business, you left your former business because of trouble. You are not the, 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 the author of relationship. It is the relationship that overflow from God that come to you. It's that relationship that continue. If you want God to involve in your relationship, you must carry him along. You must follow the active. You must follow the, the, the I mean the former the relationship from him. It must be connected. You must remain as an integral. So you can see what's happened today. You are looking for the best. The one you left, find, look, find, you can see what you are found now today. Love forgets wrongs so that there, 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 there is hope for future. The only way Christian character Grows is by facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. Tell your neighbor. Say, the only way I can grow, because if you don't know what I'm saying, I'm talking to you now. Because you say you are a Christian. Are you a Christian? Answer me. Okay, I don't need to mention anything. The only way you can grow. Say, the only way I can grow is by facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. I can hear you again. The only way I can grow is by facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. You can grow, but you are running for, 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 for the very thing that that will bring strength. You are running for the, that very thing that will promote you. Without difficulty and problems, you cannot be promoted. Those are tests. You are looking for a little problem, you will get a little promotion. Be problem, be promotion. The only way your character, your character, say the only way my character grows is by facing and dealing with problems and difficulties. The trials and difficult circumstances we face are for our obedience to God. The trials and difficult circumstances we face are for our obedience to God.
every time breakthrough. You want to hear breakthrough. When you are sick, it is time to say Jesus because. Jesus is cause. You don't want to seek. If you are not sick, how will you appreciate your good health? Tell your neighbor, if I'm not sick, how will I appreciate my good health? If you are, if you are ever sick, you will live a very bad life. There's nothing you cannot eat. There will be nothing you cannot do. If you have never been poor before, you cannot manage the wealth. When it comes, it is when you are poor, you know how to manage the wealth. It is the experience we learn from that hard time that will, that will actually give us management sense when finally the wealth comes. Take it again. As a Christian, I want to leave you here. The situation you are in, because I know you, you, you are in a situation, because there is no Christian. <laughs> no Christian. You will get to heaven to see such a Christian. Because the Bible says, in this world, there will be trouble. Share I repeat to you again. He said to you, I pray your faith will not fail. Me, there is war coming. When I say I pray you will not fall, me, you will soon fall. Take it again and take your pen and write. As a Christian, Whatever situation you are in, see it as object that separate impurities. To separate impurity me, when you face problem as a Christian, you pray the more. You fast the more. You call God the more. You know God the more. You appreciate God the more as a Christian. That is that separate impurities. See it as refiner of character to refine your character. You know, so look at a smoker. By the time he get to the doctor, doctor will say, "No, you have cancer." You say, "Doctor, what is the cause?" Ah, you're a smoker. And I'm seeing you in five days, you will die. Huh? Doctor, what do I need to do? Stop smoking. No, no, no. It's over. I have decided. Is that not refiner? Is that not refiner? Huh? You will tell the doctor, without, doctor is not Jesus. It's not Jesus, it's not prophet. But he will say, doctor, is that so? He says, that's all from today. Mm, no cigarettes. What separate impurity? What? Eh? Cancer. Whatever you are going through, very hard to call it friend. The situation is very, very hard to say, it's my friend, what I'm going through. Because in, in the actual sense, it's a friend. Because it's an object to draw you closer to God. You are sitting today quietly this morning. If everything Going where? Food on the table, 
and your going is smooth. I don't think you can off your set and be sitting down for us. For us. We are separating impurities. So that God's God's character in us can continue to grow in us. So if you said impurity is not separated, that will not allow God's character in us to grow. I told you last week that sin highs. Where there is no war, where there is no trials, sin hides. Where there is no trial, where there is no trial at all, no trial of all kind, no 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 temptation, sin will hide there. There is no room for sin to hide. When there is trial, when you are facing trial, now it's no room for sin. Rise up and let us pray. God to give you courage to hope and not give up prayer Pídele a Dios ahora que te dé el aliento necesario para no rendirte Demande a Dios de vous donner courage de ne jamais abandonner give up. You need that. Give me courage to hope. If there is no courage, you cannot hope. It is courage that you have that you hope. Give me courage, Lord. Aliento, Señor. Give me courage. Say, Lord Jesus. Señor Jesus. Give me courage. Dame aliento. Enough. Bastante. Enough. Suficiente. To hope. Para no rendirme. And not give up. Priez et demandez à Dieu assez de courage pour espérer et ne jamais abandonner. Priez. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. En el poderoso nombre de Jesús. We are going to use our situation and the message we have received for as prayer. Because I'm, I'm just what you are facing, what is before you is what I'm using as prayer for you. Listen again. Ask God to strengthen you to praise Him and not complain. Prayer. Strengthen me. To praise you because you need strength to praise God and not complain. Priez et demandez à Dieu le, la force de le louer et de ne pas se plaindre. Pídele a Dios que te dé la fuerza para no rendirte, para no quejarte. Ahora. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. En el poderoso nombre de Jesucristo. Now I say as a Christian. Whatever situation you are in, which I know, unless you want to deceive yourself. 
because that's to teach your separate impurity. Many of us we have received some teaching and doctrine that say no, a Christian does not. You are not in situation. You are a child of God. Ah. What to separate impurity? Can't you hear Paul? He said, to the end, he met the Lord. The Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. What does that mean? He was having torn in his flesh. And he ran to God first time, and God said, no, 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 my grace is sufficient for you. Me, God was using that as a refiner of character. God was using that as a builder of character. Oh my God, I like that. He said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. When I have pain, then I have peace. I like that. When I'm not happy, then I'm happy. In me, in two sides, both sides. Here is sad, and here is happy. And this, we call it, that's what we call check. Foil. F O I L. To check you. You, are, you appreciate God more. You need some, something to make you appreciate what you have. Just like when you see people without lips, you ask yourself, look at this man on the bed. How does he eat? How does he sleep? Cancer all over. But you see yourself, I'm okay. I laugh freely. I talk freely. I move freely, I eat freely. Look at someone, he cannot walk, he cannot eat, he cannot sleep. You say, oh, God, thank you. Just as you see every day, those who are looking for what you have already. Just as you, you are looking for something, someone, somewhere, half. As you are looking for something, somebody half. So also, somebody is somewhere looking for what you have. Yes. See life in that way. You are saying... I've not eaten today, and I don't know what to eat. Now you are now seeing someone who has cancer of mouth. Cancer, eating the mouth, the, the lips, the tongue, and he has money, he has everything. Now to eat now, they has to pass food through somewhere here. Are you not going to say thank you, Jesus? Although I have no food, but I have a passage to, to pass food. Here is a man, he has money, he has everything, but there's no passage to pass. So in your situation, whatever situation you are in, the prayer you need now, ask God to strengthen you, to praise him, and not complain. I want to praise God and not complain. Open your lips, prayer. Demandez à Dieu de vous donner de la force pour le louer et ne pas vous plaindre au nom de Jésus-Christ. Pídele a Dios que te fortalezca, que te fortalezca para no desfallecer y no quejarte en el nombre de Jesús.
continuer de prier, de demander à Dieu en toutes circonstances, en toutes situations, de ne pas de continuer de le louer, de ne pas vous plaindre. Televidente, ahora mismo ore para que el Señor le fortalezca para mantenerse y no quejarse en el nombre de Jesús. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is the prayer we need at this time. That God strengthen me to keep pressing on. When it seems all is over, strengthen me to keep pressing on. Prayer. Strengthen me to keep pressing on. To keep pressing on when it seems all is over. Continue to pray, to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to fortify you, to continue to advance when all seems to be terminated. Televidente, ahora mismo ore para que sea el Señor fortaleciendo para seguir adelante en el nombre de Jesús. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your lips and ask God, give me the grace, O oh Lord, to stop judging myself. No matter the situation I am as a Christian, give me the grace to stop judging myself. Because we, we, we always misjudging ourselves. We misjudging ourselves when you are facing hardship. You say, ah, you see me. I don't know. Well, I, I don't. If I'm a Christian, all this will not happen to me. Look at my colleague. That is when you begin to compare yourself to other. Ah, see, see, I just finished fasting for 30 days now. See what happened to me. All this, when you are misjudging yourself, that discourage you in your journey as a Christian. Ask God, give me the grace to stop misjudging myself because my situation does not determine my Christian life. Prayer. My situation does not determine my Christian life. I may be sick, yet I'm a Christian. I may be poor, yet I'm a Christian. I may be sick, yet I'm a Christian. My situation does not determine my Christian life. Televidente, ore para que el Señor lo fortalezca y le dé la gracia para no juzgarse a usted mismo. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. I, I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. And this is the challenge we have. We always misjudging ourselves. I use the word misjudging. Because what you say you are is not what you are. Because you are sick, you will not accept Satan's position. You will not accept you are a sinner. Whereas nothing like that. Because you are sick now, you now say, oh, I'm sick. Well, you begin to talk like a Satan, like an unbelievers, because you are sick. So what you are confessing is not what you are, because of your situation. Because I'm sick, ask God, give me grace, grace and all, to stop misjudging myself. No matter the situation, because my situation does not determine my Christian life. I may be sick, yet I'm a Christian. I may be poor, yet I'm a Christian. I may be in situation, yet I'm a Christian. My situation does not determine my Christian life. Prayer. Continue de prier, demandez au Seigneur Jésus-Christ de vous donner la grâce, la grâce suffisante d'arrêter d'avoir un mauvais jugement de vous-même, car votre situation ne détermine pas votre chrétienté. Ore para que le Seigneur le dé la grâce pour parer de juzgar sur vous même et diga que sa situation ne détermine sa vie chrétienne en le nom de Jésus.
continue de prier, demander au Seigneur Jésus de donner la grâce. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. You don't actually understand what you are talking about today. If you are able to take out this message, I think sky will be your limit. I say you you always misjudging yourself. What you confess is not what you are. I may have met a lot of people because they are in situation. They begin to confess as one of Satan. They begin to confess as follower of Satan because they are in situation. Whereas they are not one of the follower of Satan because the situation they are in, they believe that situation. They have forgotten that that situation is a refiner of character. wait until you experience what I'm talking about. You just have to take it. You know, sometimes we don't look at antecedent or track record of your mentor or your pastor or your, your boss, your chairman of the company. I told you the first, the last day of January, December that there's something in North Korea. And I say, this will be shoot out any moment. I told you. It was the third day. You, you learn it. You know what happened today on CNN. There is trouble in the world. I said, there is something not Korea now. There is, there is. The world does not even understand. They don't know that something like that is there already. I said it. That was last year. Which Nigeria, I told you here December that look, your president will be under pressure, serious pressure to devalue Naira. I told you last year. It was I told you last year that your president will be it's on the internet that your president will be under serious pressure to devalue Naira. And I say, there's nothing we can do about it. Without, it will affect your economy badly. The value, it will less. The, the, the trouble of economy will be a bit less. But without the value, it will affect your economy badly. I'm not an economist. I'm telling you what economists what beyond the economies? You know, I told you after I said it, seven days after I said it, seven days, the IMF woman came to Nigeria. And I received a lot of phone calls that I said it, so what is going to happen? I said, whatever the woman said is a parable. It's here for the value. So I'm in Nigeria and Africa and the whole world. But the valuation will, will be hard on economies. Without devaluation, it will be harder. Choose. Choose. Eh? Okay. Understand. Devaluation will be hard on economy. Without will be hardest on economy. Which one will you choose? I, I repeat again, the valuation of Naira will be hard on economy, on our economy, very hard. Without the valuation, it will be very, very, very hardest on economy. Because the, the rate of dollar 
cannot be fixed now. It can go to any land. Every day you wake up, you see it go up. up. It, it is not fixed, but I'm not an economist. I saw it before it happened, and I'm giving you an advice. I say the president is a good leader, but there will be overwhelmed pressures. Pressures on him. And not issue of mouth pressures. Do it, do it. No, not that. The economies, companies, world banks, and all over the world. I told you. And I told the Southern Africa, and I wanted to be mentioning those countries, but because I just had to say Southern, and, and I lived there, I would have begun to mention one, two, three, the country to affected. But I decided to withdraw, I said Southern Africa. In terms of drought, rain, epileptic. You know, I keep carrying the other prophecies there. I would love not to hand over to leaders instead of standing here and be telling so that they can rescue the situation. There is nowhere to run to. Our, the solution is not outside, it's inside. Each country's solution is inside their country. I brought more of the prophetic is on the table there. I was telling you first last Wednesday, but it was idiom. I swallowed. I said I will not say more than that. Mm, I have a very big reason. Mm, the, a big one, but I will swallow. I will leave the rest. So when I say first last Wednesday, you saw the helicopter uh, uh, crash. You say because TB just said fast. It's not because of that. Too. It's a different issue. Because you are always, I say the prophecy. You give meaning to my prophecy. Thank you. When I, when God used me to prophesy, you are the one to give meaning. When I say it, uh, the, uh, it will be this tomorrow. Anything that happens tomorrow is TB Joshua. God forgive you. So when I say that you fast on Wednesday, when the headquarter now crash, they say, ah, TV just said that you fast. I say, my God, which, what kind of this is it? Did I mention headquarter? Did I mention plane? So, so if we have enough time today, it's there. The what will become of Syria? God showed me yesterday. And it is very close now. Very, very close. The leader there, I'm saying, I don't want to say more. Let me just hold my peace. I think if all this message, when you said it, it will help the war to capture whatever. But when you say something, they don't have many, they don't want to criticize. So, Yesterday, God showed me the issue of Syria. What will happen? I'm seeing a border. The person I saw there, I don't want to mention anybody. Between one leg here, one leg there. You, you hear what they shot today, yesterday? The North Korea shot. You heard it? Okay, when after service, go and watch, okay? You are talking of Lassa fever, Abi? Uh, which one, the fever in Brazil again? Uh, you, you, you talk of the one they shot on the air now. That one is greater than Lassa or Sikri or Sakara, whatever you call it. <laughs> 
So God loves you. Hallelujah. So I am looking for opportunity. I want to this prophetic word to, to, to last week I was talking about the, the Saudi nation and uh, yes. So and uh, God loves you. So maybe by the time we see what God wants us to do today, we go through the message on the table there. So I don't want to print it and give you. If I give you your brother there, there are many of them are there, they'll give other meaning. They will, before you're on the internet, what I'm not saying, they twist it. Anything that happens, if there's rain, if there's no rain, they say TB Joshua is the one cause it. And I don't know anything about rain. Uh, so, so this message, I keep carrying it everywhere I'm going. But before we leave here today, on Friday, you note it. Uh, this wicked people, they want to strike. And I don't know the country, and it will be very disastrous. So please, maybe before the end of the service, we talk about that. You may be seated. Thank you.